Rob, uh, extraordinary times with the oil market as it is today, as equity markets flashing higher on the back of it. Where are there opportunities from your perspective? Well, we're long-term investors, so our primary focus is on what's going on in the world that um, will still matter five years from now. Mm. Uh, will um, COVID matter? No. Will um, uh, Ukraine matter? Maybe. Will uh, Russia, Russia's interventions matter? Geopolitically, yes. Um, and so by looking f well ahead, of, what we find is that when you have geopolitical disruptions. Uh, it creates turbulence. It creates opportunity for the patient long-term investor. Uh, I'll give one illustrative example. Emerging markets collectively got hit very hard during this Ukraine crisis. Yeah. And of course, Russian assets, stocks and bonds, have been re-weighted, re uh, removed from the indexes by index providers like FTSE and MSCI. Uh, at a presumptive price of zero. Now, the assets are still there. They're going to be worth more than zero. But uh, the removal is at a presumptive price of zero. Now, that sent uh, repercussions yeah. across the emerging markets, and they're cheap. Well, I, I'm curious. I mean, you make a great point here about it being long term and I guess finding a way to sort of ride through some of the short term uh, gyrations here. There are a lot of people out there, Rob, that are making bets that there is a, a bigger structural change afoot here in the global economy. And I guess everyone's trying to figure out how you get ahead of that. Well, one of the things that is clear is the current uh, bout of inflation is not transitory, even the Fed's not using that word anymore. But uh, while I can't say that it's not transitory on a two to four year horizon, I can say with confidence it's not transitory on a 12 to 18 month horizon. Uh, there's baked in components of inflation that are um, lagged and slow. Um, uh, owner's equivalent rent is one fourth of CPI. It's based on a survey. You, you ask thousands of people, what do you think your home would rent for? And then you compare it with last year. Mm -hmm. Well, if you're like me, I have no clue what my home would rent for. If I was in the survey, I would make a wild guess. And if it was my second time in the survey, I'd say, what did I say last year? And I'd probably add a percent. Um, because it's a survey, it overlooks the fact that home prices rose 32% in the last two years, and owner's equivalent rent during that same two years rose 6%. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of catch up baked in. Uh, that portion of inflation plays catch up for two to three years after a surge in home prices. Same thing with, with rent for renters. Um, that's also based on a survey, not of landlords, how much would you charge for rent, but renters, how much are you paying for rent? Right. Yeah, we have really interesting points there. I'm trying to, you know, sort of understand the bigger implications of all of this. When you're trying to value equities, let's say, within your world, you have to understand what a discount rate is. Are you confident that we understand what the real discount rate is? That's a really interesting question. The short answer is um, my confidence in anyone's knowledge of the real discount rate today is low. You've got 7.5% inflation, and you've got um, short rates pegged at zero. Now, sure, they're going to rise, but let's suppose the forward rate curve, which says it's going to rise um, uh, one and three quarter percent in the next 12 months. Uh, let's say that's true. Okay, one and three quarter percent if inflation is still seven, that's a negative 5% real rate. That means you're getting paid 5% per annum to go in debt. Mm -hmm. 